Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Khalid bin Utaman. I'm an EP in ED uh, Hospital Sungai Buloh. So to continue our webinar today uh, is the topic of uh, non-invasive ventilation. So first, what is uh, non-invasive ventilation? Non-invasive ventilation or NIV is the application of respiratory support by a ventilator to the patient via a sealed interface without the need of intubation. The sealed interface can be from face mask, nasal mask and helmet CPAP. This is how an IV looks like on a patient. In this patient, you can see there is a ventilator machine and the patient is put on an interface. And in this case, it's a face mask type of interface. There are two modes of an IV that we commonly use. The first mode is continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP. This mode provides positive airway pressure throughout the respiratory cycle, both during inspiration and expiration. It creates a pneumatic splint for the upper airway, preventing the soft tissue of the upper airway from narrowing and collapsing. It works by improving the lung compliance, opening collapse alveoli, improving the oxygenation and decreasing work of breathing. This mode is mostly used in case of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. The second mode is called bi-level positive airway pressure or BiPAP. The difference of this mode compared to CPAP is there is a difference uh, between the pressure provided during the inspiration or IPAP and during expiration or EPAP. Increase in IPAP is helpful to alleviate dyspnea and increase in EPAP is to uh, provide better improvement in oxygenation. Together, it helps uh, the BiPAP helps to reduce work of breathing and this mode uh, is commonly used in case of uh, COAD. There are a few ways in which the NIV works. It works by partially unloading the work of respiratory muscles, thus improving the work of breathing of the patient. Next, the pressure provided by the NIV recruits and stabilizes the collapsed alveoli, thus improving alveoli aeration and ventilation position mismatches. By giving pressure with NIV, it increases both intrathoracic and hydrostatic pressure, thus shifting the pulmonary edema into the vasculature. And the increase in intrathoracic uh, pressure will then decrease uh, venous return, the transmural LV pressure, and afterload, which give good outcome, which leads to improved cardiac function. NIV also increases tidal volume and minute ventilation, which leads to increase in uh, partial pressure of oxygen and reduction in partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide. When is NIV indicated? NIV is indicated in patients having type 1 and also type 2 respiratory failure. The example of type 1 respiratory failure is cardiogenic pulmonary edema. NIV can also be used to improve oxygenation in palliative patients who are already decided not going to be intubated. Cases of type 2 respiratory failure are like uh, acute exacerbation of COPD and neuromuscular diseases which uh, impairs patient ventilation. NIV can also be used to provide uh, pre-oxygenation before intubating a patient in RSI. Other indications include post-chest trauma, post-extubation and post-operative patients. NIV can also be considered in case of acute uh, asthma exacerbation but the benefits are still controversial. These are the evidence of usage of NIV. As mentioned before, NIV can be used in cases of cardiogenic pulmonary edema, acute exacerbation of COPD, and chest wall and neuromuscular disorders which need ventilator support. There are absolute and relative contraindications in using NIV in patients. NIV is absolutely contraindicated in patients who are in severe respiratory distress and needing immediate endotracheal intubation. It is also contraindicated in patients with low level of consciousness who can't control their airway. NIV is also contraindicated in patients with excessive oral secretions who have high risk of vomiting and aspiration. It is contraindicated in patients who had facial surgery which preclude the mass fitting. And NIV is also contraindicated in patient, patient having pneumothorax as it can worsen the condition. NIV is relatively contraindicated in hemodynamically instable patient. 
in severely hypoxic and high or hypercapnic patient, in patient who are poorly cooperative, and if you don't have trained or experienced staff to provide the NIV and monitor the patients. The advantages of using NIV is that you can avoid intubating a patient. By avoiding intubation, you reduce the risks and complications of intubating a patient, such as the side effects of pre medications given prior to intubation, the hypoxia due to prolonged time taken to intubate, and you won't have the risk uh, of uh, doing esophageal intubation or causing airway trauma if you have a difficult intubation case. You also eliminate the risk of causing ventilator-induced lung injury and ventilator-associated pneumonia if you are able to avoid intubation for your patients. Intubated patients require close monitoring and use up a lot of resources. By avoiding intubation, you can also lessen the burden on the staffs and resources, in, and resources which would be used in taking care of an intubated patients. Patients on an IV will remain awake and relatively easier to monitor and taken care of. They are able to speak to you and they are able also to take orally. Studies have shown that the patients who, who were put on an IV uh, and avoided intubation have shorter ED and hospital stay by average of 3 days. The disadvantages of an IV is it increases the intrathoracic pressure. This will lead to reduce in uh, venous return and afterload. So if you want to start an IV on a hypotensive patient, you may want to optimize them prior to the application of an IV. An IV also causes uh, claustrophobia in patients, and this may give you problems as you need your patients to be fully cooperative in order to uh, in order for the NIV to work. The use of NIV needs the patient uh, to be able to tolerate with the pressure provided by the ventilator, and the NIV can also cause uh, barotrauma such as uh, pneumothorax. And remember, in patients on NIV, their airway is not fully protected compared to patients who are intubated. So there is always a risk for aspiration in this kind of patients. So after discussing the indications and contraindications of NIV, the patients that we choose to put NIV on must be fully conscious and able to protect the airway. The patients must also be fully cooperative and able to tolerate the NIV. And don't forget, the patients must not be from the patients who have clear indications for immediate intubation. There are different types of NIV interface such as nasal mask, nasal pillow, oral nasal mask, or face mask, full face mask, and helmet NIV. Each interface has its own advantage and disadvantage. In choosing the type of interface to be used, a few things must be considered. The interface should make the patient feel comfortable, offers a good mask seal, and minimize leaks and dead space. Here you can see different types of interface used with NIV. Like this one, uh, it is called oronasal mask, or can be called also as a face mask. It is uh, the most commonly used type in ED. And here you can see this is a nasal pillow, and uh, this is a nasal mask. And this one is called a full face visor, and this one is a helmet CPAP. So once you have decided to put patient on NIV, there are few steps you need to do. As for any procedure done in ED, you must explain to the patient what are you going to do. The patient must be given reassurance so that he or she can be as cooperative. Choose the right size of mask and make sure it offers a good seal for the patient, as you don't want any leakage of air from an ill-fitted mask. Then you have to set the appropriate uh, FiO2 desired on the ventilator. Usually, we will start at uh, FiO2 of 1 and taper down later. Start the ventilator at lower pressure so that the patient can tolerate the NIV better. Once the patient is comfortable, you then can titrate up the pressure gradually until satisfactory response is achieved. Check for any leaks and adjust the strap as needed. Remember to monitor the patient closely and do frequent assessment for the patient. After starting the NIV to the patient, get an ABG after 60 minutes to evaluate the success of your treatment. Patients who are put on NIV must be closely monitored. There are few parameters that need to be monitored. There are clinical parameters where we observe the patient as a whole. 
we, we have to monitor the comfort and tolerance level of the patient towards the NIV. Closely monitor patient's respiratory rate and respiratory pattern and look for any usage of accessory respiratory muscles which can tell you that the patient is deteriorating. Pay a close attention on patient's level of consciousness as well and whether they can still maintain the ability to protect the upper airway. Physiological parameters that need to be monitored include oxygen saturation, blood gases to monitor the pH, the PaO2 and PaCO2. If you have the end tidal CO2, you can use that as a tool for monitoring as well. And don't forget to monitor patient's vital signs such as BP and heart rate and also the cardiac rhythm. You can also uh, monitor the progress of the patient by using lung ultrasound, bedside echo and also chest x-ray. After putting the patient on NIV, we have to look for the response of the patient towards our intervention. So, in predicting whether the patient will benefit or fail from the NIV, we can use a score system which is called HACO score to guide us making the decision whether to continue the patient on NIV or the patient has failed and needing an intubation. The HACO score uses bedside variables such as heart rate, pH, conscious level and PF, PF ratio and also respiratory rate. As you can see, each of the variable is assigned with individual point. What you need to do is score the patient according to his condition and total the numbers up. The score is measured at intervals of 1 hour, 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours post initiation of NIV. Total score of more than 5 at 1 hour predicts 80% uh, rate of failure and if the patients show improvement in the HACO score between the intervals, it means the NIV is a success. However, unaltered or increase in score means our intervention is a failure and patient needs to be intubated. In conclusion, NIV is widely used in ED nowadays and we should get to familiarize with its usage. Remember the indications and contraindications of starting the NIV and choose the appropriate patients you want to start on NIV. With correct and appropriate use of NIV, we can actually avoid patients from being intubated and all patients who are started on NIV needs to be closely monitored. With that, I conclude my presentation for today and if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to throw your questions in the chat box. Thank you.